I can't tell you how excited, proud, and humbled I am by this recognition, especially since it comes with a nomination from your classmates, the people that we lived through this experience and we have served with in the fleet, and to have it come to this, it's, it's a tremendously gratifying moment and humbling. You know, I look at the roster of distinguished graduates from the Naval Academy, and these are heroes of mine. And so to be counted among their number, I, I, it's a very humbling experience. Most days go flying by with little or no significance. And then along comes a day that takes on the significance of a lifetime. Today is such a day for me. Coming back to the Academy is really special. Now, I've come back a lot and have participated in various events here on the yard. But every time I come back, even just walking around Annapolis, it's amazing. It's like, hey, I, I'm 20 years old again. It, it's amazing how four years of your life can make such an impression and be such a part of you. I, uh, it's, a, it's a special place, and it's just it's great to come back to. I feel totally at home here. This is, uh, this is a place that, that, you know, it made me who I am, and I couldn't be more pleased to be able to come home to the Academy. Being back at the Naval Academy today and the game on Saturday is like recharging my blue and gold battery. And when I think about this, the third stanza of our alma mater comes to mind. It goes something like, whenever two or three shall meet and old tales be retold, from low to highest in the fleet, we'll pledge the blue and gold. Throughout my time, starting here at the Academy, whether it was Bancroft Hall, Rickover Hall, the ball fields, Warden Field, the reality is that everything that we did, we did together as a team. And throughout my career, that, that whole idea of work as a team, do greater things as a team, well, that's, that's part of my DNA now. We had many good days, and we had some not so good days while we were here, but it was all part of an experience that developed me into an officer with the ability to lead in the fleet and to make it back here and see, one, how things have remained the same, but as importantly, how things have changed. The midshipmen and how resilient and tough they have been through this entire COVID experience and continued on to get ready to, let, to get into the fleet. Right now, you're on top of the world, and you should be. You've worked hard. Just don't get too comfortable up there. The world is waiting to take you on. There's a great power competition out there, and we can't settle for being second. So as you look forward to serving in the greatest Navy in the world, be advised, your job is to make it greater. So one of the greatest things about the profession that you have chosen is you're gonna get a lot of responsibility very early in your career. A day is gonna come when you're gonna be introduced to your first division or platoon, and you're going to be the most inexperienced person in the room. First, work to establish yourself as a master of your craft. This is where you'll first begin to develop your service reputation, and there's no faster way to earn the respect of your people than to work hard and learning your job and continuing to strive to get better and to help those around you get better. A day may very well come when you're a master of your craft will be the difference in prevailing in battle and may in fact someday save your life and that of your crew. Your future leaders will care about sustained outstanding performance, compassionate leadership, superior judgment, 
perseverance under stress, a hard work ethic, deep loyalty, the ability to build and lead strong teams, uncompromising ethics, integrity, and character, and lastly, a passionate commitment to mission success. So don't be fearful of taking risks. Set your goals to match your dreams and innovative ideas. Commit to working hard. Don't be afraid to hire people brighter than you. Give them your vision, enhance it with their input, empower them to make it happen. You do this and you will achieve results beyond your wildest expectations. You guys are the leaders of the future in the Navy, in the Marine Corps, in industry and in government. And I know that with you at the helm, our nation is going to continue to lead on the land, on the sea, in the air, and in space. I have no doubt about it, knowing who you are and what you're doing. When it comes to our core values, uphold your honor and have integrity in whatever you do. Be a respected leader. Trust takes time to build and can be lost in an instant. Have the courage to take on any assignment, and remember, not even the sky is the limit. Have the commitment to never give up and to persevere until you have succeeded in your mission. Nothing worth doing is easy. It requires commitment. Commitment to train, commitment to excel, commitment to your team, putting their welfare above your own if you're gonna be successful. You are fortunate to be at this institution where you have the opportunity to be educated, train, and learn with practical experience and integrity and ethics. Like competence and stamina, you have to put in the reps and sets to develop the instincts about integrity, and it requires continuous effort. Because the challenges to your integrity will likely not come in neat, easily recognizable situations. They're going to come at you when you're tired, when you're under stress, and when you're faced with complexity. The more you've thought about how integrity and ethics apply in different situations, the more likely you will be to recognize those challenges when they come at you, or at least the situation will give you enough pause to think about how more carefully to proceed. 100 days from today, when you march on at the Army-Navy game, all of America will be watching you. They'll see themselves in your ranks. They'll take confidence knowing that you will be defending their freedom. Knowing that when you set sail from Annapolis, America set sail. So make us proud that day and beat Army.